Welcome back to the program. As we welcome back to the program, Mike Jenkins from the Jenkins Law Firm. And this morning, we're talking about people taking money from you, Jackie. Garnishment. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, isn't that what you put on your food? Is make it look pretty? Garnishment? No. Well, oh, okay. this isn't so pretty, though. Ah. Uh, tell everybody what this is. And these garnishments are not like Robin Hood robbing from the uh, rich and giving to the poor. It's actually the rich robbing from the poor. Um, so a garnishment is an um, involuntary payment of your debts. So what occurs is if one of your creditors, one of your medical bills, one of your credit card companies finally gets around to taking you to court because you didn't pay your debt for a really long time, they get a thing called a judgment. So this judgment is a piece of paper signed by the judge that now gives them uh, teeth to collect this judgment. They can do things like take money out of your bank account, they send a sheriff to the bank and say whatever's in the bank account you have to give to the creditor. Really? So it's frozen and the garnishment will stay there for 120 days and so any money going in won't go back out. Uh, most people figure out, because they're told right away, they've been garnished, so they stop their deposits. Right. Um, but if there's a lot of money in there, when it starts, that can be a bad thing. Then um, another type of garnishment that occurs is your wages, and so that's kind of a different thing. Uh, the statutes of Iowa govern wage garnishments, and so what happens is the sheriff has a notice go to the payroll department of the employer, and then they'll begin taking money out of the person's paycheck. Now, this is all with the knowledge of the employee, I would hope. Well, when a garnishment on a wage, well, in both instances, the creditor is required to serve a legal notice to the person that's going to suffer the loss, mm -hmm. and they have a legal right to go to court and challenge the garnishment if they have any legal right to do so, which is rarely the case. I mean, these garnishments are normally lawful. Uh, they're just unfortunate, and uh, they hurt. Now, is that the only thing you can do is, is go and say, uh, we'll just take them back to court? Does, would, that, would that slow it down if that happens? No, it no. won't. The garnishment keeps going, and uh, the, a hearing will eventually be set in court, and you can go in front of the judge and plead your case, but um, unless you can say, hey, it ain't me, or... Um, that judgment uh, was against somebody else, I shouldn't be having this come out of my wage. Uh, you generally are going to lose. If it's a wage garnishment, sometimes you can get the mercy of the court, and if you've got some poor gal that's uh, a single mom with three kids at home and she's making $10 an hour, sometimes a judge will have pity and basically not let the creditor take as much as the statute says they can take. W what is that? Well, what's the most they can take? There's a sliding scale. So in a wage garnishment, um, they will take money out of a person's paycheck at the rate of 25% of their take-home pay, and that'll run for four months. It'll stop, however, if the creditor has reached the level of money they can collect in a calendar year. Okay. And, and so it's a scale based on income. I can't remember all of the scale, I can remember part of it. The low end is if you make 12000 and under, they can take $250 in total during a calendar year. Hmm. At the top end, if you make 50000 or more annually, they can take 10% of your gross in a calendar year. So if they've yeah. collected 5000 on a $50,000 income in four months, it's over for the year. If they haven't, they can renew the garnishment and let it run some more until they've collected the $5,000 if, if the judgment is more than that. Now, I imagine you can't just make a phone call and have a garnishment happen. Though. No, it's, it's papers that are submitted to the county court where the judgment exists, and then f more papers are issued to the county sheriff uh, where the employer is located, and then notice is sent to the employer. They used to hand deliver it, but now they don't do that anymore. I guess the sheriff Sheriff's departments want to save on gas. Yeah, well, they but, probably spend the whole day just you know delivering those. I imagine. Right, and and, and it hurts. These people are losing 25 percent of their take-home pay, and there's not a lot you can do on a wage garnishment as far as stopping it. Now, when you file a bankruptcy, the garnishments, st all garnishments, stop immediately. They do. We notify the county sheriff's departments of the bankruptcy filing. They then notify the employer or the bank to terminate the garnishment, and so uh, if it's done in time, we can recover the money that's been taken from the person. Oh, so you can get some of that money back? Yes, in a wage garnishment, we, we, can, we can recover most of the funds, if not all of them, um, eventually. Um, the bank account garnishments, those get stopped, and again, depending upon how much money was in the bank, we can retrieve those too. Now, the interesting thing is, 
if there's no bankruptcy, we can still protect money in the bank, and so can the person who's being garnished. Unfortunately, they just don't know. Um, these protections that we've spoken about in previous shows about that a person taking bankruptcy can protect certain property, these are all created under Iowa law uh, for protecting your assets from creditors. So these exist outside of bankruptcy. Okay. So a person can protect up to $1,000 of money in the bank uh, as a protection um, under the exemption statutes. And so if you've got a husband and wife, that ups it to $2,000 in the bank. So when your bank account gets garnished, a person just needs to know their rights and they can file a paper with the court objecting to it stating that this money is protected, uh, it's exempt, and um, most people, well all people don't know that and so they don't do anything and they lose their money. Now if they've come to me for a bankruptcy and this has happened, normally I just place a phone call to the creditor's attorney that's done it and say, hey release the money, there was less than a thousand in here or you know there's a husband and wife and there's 1200, we get it all and all we have to do is show them a record from the bank account how much was in there when the garnishment hit and they release the money. Okay. So a person could do that themselves if they know. So hopefully if there's a, a lot of people watching today and this uh, happens to them, they'll uh, be able to help themselves and go to court and maybe get their money back uh, without having to go to a lawyer. Because now you keep saying Iowa law, Iowa law. What happens if maybe something happened and you were in Illinois? or okay. you were in Minnesota? That's a real good question because um, people move around a lot and sometimes uh, they have debt problems where they were living in other states and they came to Iowa to come and get a good job. Right. And so if they had a judgment against them, well I've got one right now in the state of Michigan and they come to Iowa and they're working here a few years, um, that judgment can come to Iowa but there's certain procedures that they have to use a creditor's got to send that judgment to an Iowa lawyer and then have it essentially registered in Iowa. A notice has to be then mailed to the person that the judgment's against saying, hey, this is happening. If you want to challenge it, you got 20 days to say, hey, this isn't me, it's an unlawful judgment or something, but they're usually valid. And then they can go and garnish on that judgment just like it was uh, an Iowa judgment. The problem is, I, I've got a case right now where some attorney's office, a collection firm, sent a garnishment paper from Michigan Michigan to my client's employer here in Iowa and it's just an Iowa employer and they weren't really uh, experienced and knowledgeable and they just started taking money out of my client's paycheck oh, and they shouldn't have done it because mm -hmm. they're only oh. supposed to take it out if it's from an Iowa uh, Sheriff's Department right. that's directing it but a lot of these people they don't know they're, they're just payroll people it. they're not right. lawyers oh. and they don't wow. think maybe we should check with our yeah. legal staff we haven't <laughs> seen this before right. now the the difference is if you work for a national employer like Wells Fargo Bank where they're all over the country if there happens to be one in Michigan they can just serve Wells Fargo in Michigan on that Michigan judgment and then that'll eventually show up at the place that handles all payroll for Wells Fargo and that person here in Iowa will lose their wages because they served it lawfully in Michigan on a national employer and there's a lot of other national employers that that can happen with but in this case that I'm talking about here uh, my client didn't work for a national employer right. she looked for a local Iowa company and so the, what the law firm did was illegal and they uh, took one part of my client's paycheck and are having to send the money back and they immediately notified the employer hey we made a mistake stop this yeah a lot but, of rules and wow. regulations it's good to have someone you can talk to that knows exactly what's going on yeah right it's, now, it's people want to get a hold of you and uh, get more information on this what's the easiest way well you can call me at 255-1855 and I'd be happy to talk to you on the phone 